Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy. I'm a lease operator and a trainer with Rail Transport. And today I'm gonna to be answering the question, how much money do you make as a lease operator? So if you're interested in finding out, stick around. Before we begin, I'd like to make a quick note on transparency. I think that being open with these numbers is gonna be your best recruitment tool there is. If you want to, you know, people to be a part of what you're doing, then that honesty and that authenticity is gonna be really important. So that is the big motivation for why I do what I do. You know, part of the value that I provide to people on social media is by sharing my experiences and giving my insights to what I'm going through. Man, this chair's losing. <laughs> my seat's sinking, it's sinking. Part of the value that I give uh, to other people, my fellow drivers, is by sharing my experiences and my thoughts and what I'm going through, the mistakes I'm, many, ma the mistakes I'm making, so other people could learn from my mistakes and hopefully avoid them and you know have a little bit easier time than I did because I definitely have to learn some things the hard way and I've definitely you know made some poor decisions coming into this. So uh, let's learn and grow together. Here we are in the ATBS app, and today I'm gonna to go over the past year's revenue that I've made from uh, leasing here and training. So as we can see, we're looking at this year so far, and I haven't logged anything, so it's a big old zero. But I could check and go back to year to date. And let's see, we're on 2023, which was last year. So we'll go ahead and um, apply that, and we're gonna click here it is, okay? This is miles, here's loaded, empty, total miles. Here's revenue. The uh, accessory pay is the training pay I get and then the course of fuel surcharge and then my mile rate, which I am contract rate, so I'm locked in at a certain mileage for each load, a certain rate for each load. All right, and here we go. Here's the uh, cents per mile breakdown for, for what I have here. It's about $1.96 cents per mile for this total here's the expenses of course fuel being one of the biggest ones and maintenance this maintenance is a little bit shy it's it's a little there's about uh, eight drive tires which isn't included in this and that was pretty penny too so it's like over three grand and then an, uh, another twenty four hundred dollar repair needed to add it on to this so that's probably closer to double it i spent about twelve thousand last year in maintenance which needs to be updated in this so here we have the profit. Here's about the net miles to break even. All right, cents per mile. Now we're gonna compare this to 2022. So we're gonna apply this and start all the way back over. Here's loaded empty total miles. And then here's revenue and then total revenue. This was a lot better year. My first year out and my last year, cause I've been doing it for three years and those are pretty close. This was the standout year though. I had a really good, I think everybody had a really good 2022. All right, expenses. This one I had about $9,000 in maintenance for that year total. Let's see, some other, and here's the profits and there's net, miles break even. All right, now we're gonna pop in 2021 and apply it. This was my first full year. I started in December of 2020, so this there wasn't anything in 2020 really. All right, here's the mileage. Here's the revenue. And then the expenses. And back down to the profit. Now keep in mind, I am paying myself $1,000 a week salary and all the rest goes into the business. I'm putting it into maintenance accounts, escrow accounts. That way when I have some downtime due to truck payments or anything personal going on in my life, I'm able to maintain a steady income that way. So in the year 2023, I made a switch. I went from uh, sole prop to escort. And the reason I did this was to save money on taxes. So I got about six months in so far as a W-2 employee at 
And that's what you see in the 2023. If you're looking at those numbers and you see the difference, that's because that information has been added in there. And so come in 2024, at the end of next year, I'll be able to share with you guys the tax savings that I was able to have by making this switch. Because when you have an S Corp, you know, there's two separate accounts that are filing for taxes. There's your personal account, the W-2, and then there's the business. And the business account is not subjected to Medicaid and Social Security tax, so it's about a 13% savings on taxes. So I'll show you what those numbers look like here, and we'll have some good comparisons, because I'll have, like I say, two years in already as a sole proprietor, and I'll be able to compare them to a first full year. So stick around, I'll see you when that time comes. I'll make a video talking about that.